zero accounting software, report formatting basics, get ready to be an office hero with zero. Here we are in our custom zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, scrolling in a bit, holding control, scrolling up on the mouse wheel, currently at 175%, scroll in, opening the demo file, but doing so with the reset button, resetting the data and opening the demo. We're gonna be opening two tabs to put our major financial statement reports in as we do every time, hiding this. Open, <laughs> right click, and then we'll duplicate the tab up top. We'll right click and then duplicate the tab again. Go back to the tab to the left. Accounting drop down. We want then the balance sheet report. Tab to the right. We're going to open up the income statement. Accounting drop down and income statement. As that is thinking, tab to the left. And we're going to change the date as we have been doing every time. And we're going to customize it and bring the date up to 2022, end of the period, and update that information. Okay, so last time we went over the balance sheet in general. Now we want to look at some of the formatting tools that Xero has to adjust reports. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Although we're focused in on the balance sheet, many of the tools we'll be looking at will be applicable to other reports as well. And as we go through them, remember that the balance sheet and the income statement are from a reporting standpoint, in essence, the end result, what we're trying to create when we do the data input entering these forms, which create financial transactions, constructing the balance sheet income statement and related reports. Balance sheet represents things as of a point in time. The income statement has a time frame, a beginning and an end, a performance report. So it's also useful when you're looking at these tools to consider that framework in terms of the other reports you might apply these tools to. Are they more like an income statement report that are measuring performance, meaning they have a time range, a beginning and an end, or a balance sheet type of report, which are showing where we stand as of a point in time. So for example, the accounts receivable has other reports, which are gonna break out who owes us the money by uh, customer. So if that's what it's showing, it's still showing who owes us stuff as of a point in time, as of this date. Whereas if I have reports related to the income statement, I might have a report that shows me the sales by customer or by item. And, and that's gonna have to have a beginning and an end. What do you mean? Sales for like a month, sales for a year, and so on and so forth. And that could have an impact in terms of, of your dates and whatnot when you're using some of these tools up top. Okay. I also just want to note when we're looking at these reports, if I go to the first tab and we go to the accounting dropdown and look at these reports, you, you might say, hey, look, there's not as many reports in other kinds of accounting software, say like a QuickBooks, for example. But just realize that a lot of reports that are in, say, other software like a QuickBooks are actually just compilations, changes, modifications, adjustments of the main reports. So many times you can make a whole lot of different reports just from a balance sheet and income statement, for example, by just changing the ranges you're look at, looking at. Am I looking at one period, multiple period, multiple months this year compared to last year? So when you get into comparative reports, there's a whole bunch of other reports. Zero doesn't really, really flood their report center as much as like say QuickBooks does with some of these comparative reports, which are really just things that have been that have been created from the major financial statement reports because you could build them yourself. So I just want to kind of uh, note that out as we go. We will get into those comparative kind of reports and how to build them. Zero has a really nice uh, tool that's more flexible in a lot of ways than other accounting software to do that. Okay, so that said, we're going to go over here. Balance sheet is as of a point in time. 
So if you have the drop down up top, you could say that you want to run it as of today. So if you're running your accounting system in real time, that could be useful, of course, end of this month. So you might say, hey, look, it's currently the eighth right now. So I could run it as of the end of the month, December, and then uh, end of last month. So you might want to say, I'm, I want to have it to the end of the last full month, end of last quarter, the end of the last uh, year, the end of the last year, and then of course the custom date. So if we're not working in real time, the custom date is often uh, useful. Now notice that sometimes it's useful to have like these indicator range, right? End of end of the last month indicates a range. And although we're still reporting this, if I update this as of the end of November, we do have related reports when I go into the data here. So if I drill down on the data, then this is a report that's more like an income statement report in that it's showing us activity over a time frame. So notice that that zero generally is going all the way from January uh, through. So if I go into a report, then the general default uh, will typically on the balance sheet go from from the beginning of the year, your fiscal year to the end. So whenever you drill down, you're gonna have to change the range here. So if I just wanna see this detailed report, for the November 1st and update it. So now I've got the, the detail for the activity in November. So you wanna have an idea of what's gonna happen when you drill down on the data in terms of, this is kind of like a GL report, a checking account transactions report, they're gonna call it, but they give us the detail by date. All right, let's go back and let's go back again. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna change the date back to a custom date and let's put it at the end of December, which has been what we've been working with mainly. So there is is that. So then we can compare with, you got your comparative items, uh, compare month. So let's check that out, compare month. So now we've got uh, December 2021, I mean, sorry, 2022 versus November 2022. So you can give us the side by side uh, comparison there and this is where we get into all a whole lot of variations now note that these variations are kind of like the custom variations because they're just showing us the side by side with basically a default custom drop down so these are the most common ones we can go into a lot more variations by going into by building our own layout reports down here which we'll talk about later so we've got uh, two months so if I go to the, the two months so now we've got December, November, October. Notice when I look at it this way, it's showing the the latest month first, which is quite common because that's gonna be the, instead of showing it from oldest to newest, we're showing most recent, which is gonna be the most relevant data most of the time to the least relevant data. So once again, we've got this nice uh, side by side for two months and we can go to the three months and update it and so now we've got three uh the three months and then of course the four months uh enter a different number so we could go 12 if we want to go all the way up to 12 and update that i don't know if i updated the last one with the three months and so now we've got this long report here that uh, could be useful especially if we export it now now again Notice if you're looking at a balance sheet and you're trying to say what reports am I going to be giving to say a client or supervisor, now you've got all these reports that you can think about just with the balance sheet, right? Do I want the balance sheet as of a point in time? I might have a balance sheet that compares the prior month, possibly the, the prior three months, the months to date and stuff like that uh, starts to get a lot of different reports. So then you might also consider the periods in terms of quarters. So if I look at the quarters and then I say, I want to have, let's say two quarters here, and then I'll update that. So now we've got the two quarters. So we've got the December, September, and then uh, June. So, and then I can bring it down to one maybe. So now we've got uh, September and uh, December quarters. So we got some nice, you know, standard comparative kind of options. Let's bring it back to none and update we've got our filtering options so if you have your if you have things like regions set up then you can pull the data and this is this is kind of interesting because 
notice like sometimes you might especially it is more common on the income statement if you used something to break out your transactions by column for example often happening on the income statement to try to break out by region uh, that's one kind of tool that can be used in accounting software but here we're gonna, we could say well what if I want to filter the data that's in this current number and filter out by region so I'm just want to say I just want to have the data that are using the regions of the east side and apply that now you've got your filtering your filtering options down here let's say I just do north apply I didn't update it that's why and so so now we've got a, a difference in the data that's being pulled in so that's kind of an an interesting feature that's would be a customized feature that would be used if you're if you have regions if you uh, sort in your data by regions which is kind of a specialty area so we might touch on that more uh, in, in, a, in a little bit but we won't go into it in a lot of detail but it's kind of an interesting feature I'm going to update it back again so now we're back into our total data and then we've got the more options we've got the good old accrual versus cash option this one a lot of accounting softwares have this kind of check between these two things and I think it's really a neat feature to have but just realize that that uh, from a from a pragmatic standpoint, it kind of confuses people sometimes because you might say, hey, look, I want to be on a cash based system for in other words, I would not uh, move it from accrual. I would keep it on accrual unless you have a specific reason to be going to the cash based method. And the reason for that is because even if you are are using a cash based system, you're not using a cash based system just because you click this little box that says cash based. It's usually based on your flow, what kind of industry you're in and how that industry works. So for example, if I jump over here to our to our flow chart and we think about you, you also can have a difference in terms of are you on a cash based or, or accrual based with regards to your two main cycles, the vendor cycle or expense cycle and the customer cycle. So for example, on the vendor cycle, you you uh, you're going to at the end of the day, cash is going out for goods and services that we are buying in the business. Now, the easiest way to do that, a cash-based system, would be that we're just going to pay for it possibly electronically as they come up with, in essence, a check form or a money out type of form, possibly just using bank feeds to do that. In that case, we're on a cash-based system because the form that we're using is just going to record the decrease in cash and expense when we enter it. I don't need to click the little box to check from an accrual to cash based system. It's already on a cash based system because of the business we are in and how we're conducting it. If we're entering a bill into the system, that's an accrual form increase in the accounts payable account. So if you're tracking accounts payable, you don't want to click to a cash based system because you want to track the outstanding bill. And if you if you switch to a cash based system, you would think what would happen then is the system's not going to record the expense until you pay the bill which could be a neat feature to have if you know what you're doing but you don't want to like think that you're on a cash based system when you're entering bills in your accrual system just because you click the little cash based based button right on the and then on the revenue side you could have you could be on a cash based system on vendors but accrual on the revenue side so for example revenue if you're in a gig economy you might be able to wait till something just like clears the bank and then record the increase with a with a with a money in form, a deposit form in essence, and revenue at that time. But you also might be having to have a food truck kind of situation where you have a cash register or a store where you still are on a cash based system, but you're recording the the receipts at the point in time you receive them. These two methods, you'd still be on a cash based system in essence just because of the way you enter the data, not because you click the button on the report to be cash based. But if you're in a system where you have to invoice the client because you have to do the work first, like a bookkeeping firm, a law firm, landscaping, then then it is what it is, right? You have to track the accounts receivable. So that's what you wanna do. If you click the cash based button and you're entering invoices, what it's gonna do is it's not gonna record the, the revenue until you receive the payment in terms of the financial reporting. But that's but you, but for your normal reporting, if you have to track accounts receivable, you're going to want to have accounts receivable. So that's the general the general thing there. So be careful with it. Notice if I these accounts right here, accounts receivable and accounts payable are basically accrual accounts. So 
if you were to say I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to a cash based system and show accounting basis code so I'm gonna say okay so then you would think those those accounts basically go away right there are no accounts receivable and accounts payable does that mean I didn't enter an invoice no it means that the system is now not recording the the transaction until you receive payment from it right it's it's going to wait to record the transaction even though you entered an invoice until you get the payment because it's a cash based system and there are no accounts receivable and accounts payable on a cash based system okay enough with that we're going to go back to accrual just keep it on the accrual unless unless uh you have a reason to do otherwise be be careful with it so then we've got uh show the accounting basis so we can show those items and uh, the account codes which are basically like the account numbers and uh, the decimals so I'll, I'll keep all of that on for now show all that so now we've got the code numbers which could be nice because and this is a great feature in zero that for some reason other software like like uh, QuickBooks doesn't have I don't believe which is the fact that you can turn the codes on and off right so so it's kind of nice that if you're going to print this report you don't want to have your account numbers oftentimes in the report so you can turn them off or you can put them back on if you put the codes on then it's going to order within each of these account sections by code i believe right because that's so that's the ordering that it's going to be if you turn them off i believe it's going to default to an order of alphabetical order so if i turn this off accounts payable will be above the checking account because this the checking account is a the reason the checking accounts down here is because it's a negative balance i believe instead of up top so let's go ahead and change it back and test that theory out so i'm going to say uh let's take the codes off and then boom it also shows the accrual basis and the title up here. That's what the accrual basis does. So now the accounts payable is first, right? Now it's in alphabetical order. So that's a nice way that you can kind of uh, organize your accounts by code if you want to do that. Although then the code kind of shows up, which is not as nice for external reporting. But in any case, there's another way that you could sort your data too that we'll look at shortly. And that's with the edit layout over here. So then we now we've got the account numbers on, which is neat. So you can turn them on. I, I like turning them off oftentimes unless unless I want more detail in my reporting. So I'll turn the decibels off and I don't need code numbers. I don't need the accrual basis. So I'll turn that off. So those are those options. Then you've got the information on the left hand side balance sheet. So you've got your kind of standard comparative re reports. So I got my monthly comparative reports. So notice again other software I'm going to close this up. So now you've got kind of your default uh, comparative report here. Other software, let's change the date up to here and update. We'll have these kind of comparative default reports possibly in uh, in over here in the reports area. So you, they've got they've got some standard comparative reports basically on this arrow on the left hand side. So it's I kind of I kind of like it that way so now so you don't have as much stuff cluttering up your your reports but you still have those default kind of comparative reports over here and of course with the option to make them in the drop down for the default with your default reports so those are those uh, and then you've got your custom reports we'll, which we'll get into in a little bit more detail and you have a lot of customization features down here in the edit layout so if i go into that this is where you can do a lot of uh, more customizable things than you can do in other accounting software so we can we can make our custom reports and we can save them once we have made them so i'm going to we'll talk about that more in the future going to close that out for now look forward to that though that'll be good and then you've got uh you've got the compact view which kind of tightens things up a bit so I'm going to go back to the standard view and then you've got the uh, insert. So add, add a note. So if I wanted to add a note somewhere, so now I've got these little tags on the right, so I can, I can add a note to it. So if I'm going back and forth and, uh, you know, have some comments on it, then I can put my comments and my, and my uh, notes to them. So that's kind of neat if you're working with other people and you're doing some more like audit kind of work 
and then I can save this item, save it as a draft, uh, save it uh, as a custom kind of item so that when I go into my reports over here, then I can save uh, my reports. Here's the drop down custom drafts and I can put them into like custom reports so that I can sort them out. So we'll talk more about saving the reports later and then we can export as a PDF, Excel or, or Google. And usually the printing options within, and this is, this is nice because this is another one that I don't think uh, like, uh, like some of the QuickBooks export directly to Google oftentimes. You have the Excel option. So that's kind of nice because a lot of people are going to the Google suite kind of products and, and having the web-based stuff that might be a little bit easier sometimes. And then we've got the PDF. Now, if you're going to print something, the typical format within zero is to, is to open it as a PDF and then print it, right? So we'll open it up and then you've got your printing options uh, once it's opened from the PDF. So those are the general formatting. In future reports, we'll build some comparative reports and we'll use the more, the more complex edit layout, which is quite flexible and impressive and, and has more options than other software, such as like a QuickBooks. So it's a neat feature.